Here at Tangent 1985, we watch everything. And because we watch everything, we try to review everything. But as there are only so many hours in the day, we can't every time give every movie the lengthy analysis they deserve. My name is M. Glenn Gore, and this is one of those times. Hold on tight, because here comes in and out like Glenn. And today we're talking about Jumanji. Welcome to the jungle. The following video review contains spoilers for the film Jumanji. Welcome to the jungle. Proceed with caution. This only kinda sorta sequel to the Joe Johnston movie based on Chris Van Allsburg's original novel brings the eponymous family pastime into the late 20th century, I guess, by updating it from tabletop board game to a 16-bit cartridge video game for a system that never existed. This newest adventure follows four disparate stereotypes who've each been given detention for various unremarkable reasons. While cleaning the high school basement as part of their punishment, the kids run afoul of the dusty console and are immediately warped into the world of the game. Once inside, our four players discover they are each controlling the character avatar they selected, complete with skills, strengths, and weaknesses. Spencer, formerly the awkward nerd and game geek of the group, becomes aircraft carrier-sized adventurer and rogue Smolder Bravestone, played by Dwayne Johnson. Fridge, the resident dumb jock, turns into diminutive zoologist Franklin Finbar, Kevin Hart doing his best Kevin Hart impression. Vapid, self-obsessed alpha girl Bethany learns she is now middle-aged, overweight cartographer Professor Shelley Oberon, Jack Black, in a genuinely funny turn here. And Martha, whose only crime seems to be that she's kind of a jerk to her gym teacher, finds she is now Ruby Roundhouse, a Lara Croft-inspired commando played by Karen Gillan. In an amusing twist that I kinda wish hadn't been in the trailer, each player becomes the game archetype most diametrically opposed to their real-world personality, which would be a blast if the movie was capable of even a modicum of sincerity. Even for a kid's film, this thing is embarrassingly inauthentic. Even the very Breakfast Club-esque moments where the characters look beyond their preconceived, surface notions to realize they've misjudged one another ring forced and false. The kid's primary objective in Jumanji is to return a magical MacGuffin to its place of origin and lift the curse that has befallen the land. In order to do that, they must traverse the jungles, pits, and cliffs of the game world, doing battle with stampeding animals and motorcycle-riding marauders led by the game's boss, a big game hunter type named Van Pelt, whose previous contact with the aforementioned MacGuffin device has granted him dominion over the insects and animals. That part's admittedly kinda righteous, but the movie never goes far enough with it. This is easily the film's biggest flaw. I don't know if it's that it was written by people who've never actually played a video game, or if it's written by people who hate video games, but it's one or the other. Or both. I'm willing to concede it may have also been due to budgetary constraints, but at close to $100 million, this thing is woefully unambitious. There are no discernible levels, only uninteresting places within the jungle populated by various nondescript enemies. The terrain is unoriginal, lacking even rudimentary danger zones like waterfalls and volcanoes. There are no real puzzles to figure out, no mini-bosses, no power-ups. There are precious few wild animals to contend with, which is disappointing since the villain can control them with his mind. The two and a half fight scenes are not terribly well staged or choreographed. The weather is always compliant, and nearly everything takes place in broad daylight. Even the final boss battle is, well, there isn't one, and that's a damn sin. I'm not saying it had to be Contra up in here, but anything would have been better, and more exciting. Two and three quarter stars, mildly diverting, occasionally funny, but utterly unambitious. See it for Jack Black, he's more than worth the price of admission. That's it for today's episode. As always, thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe, and follow me on Twitter for more updates. Until next time, you were just in and out like Glenn.